Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. Uh, today, I am talking about how to make these little stitch holes or circles or whatever you want to call them. Now, this can be for anything you need it for. You know, for some reason, you need a bunch of little holes around a piece of wood. But I'm personally, I'm using this for leather. I'm making a lot of wallets. And it's been so fantastic to be able to do it right in Lightburn. So I did a video before called Make a Leather Hat Patch. And that has this in it. But of course, that didn't tell you, that wasn't specific. And basically, all the comments are about not knowing that this thing existed. So I figured I'd better make a video so that everybody would be able to do it. And as a matter of fact, I'm making uh, a new little clutch purse or something. And uh, I needed to do that. So I figured, hey, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a video specifically on it. And I had no idea this existed. There are so many tools in Lightburn that you have no idea that exist and that are so important. You can do pretty much all of your designing right in Lightburn. And that's really I, going from AI and then having to do all everything and bring it into Lightburn and resizing and making sure everything's right. It was kind of a pain. And so uh, learning a lot of the tools in Lightburn was a big, big, big help for me. And there's still so much more to learn. You're not going to learn everything right away. You know, you want to make like this is going to be for a zipper. So I'm going to have to get rid of this line. And, you know, being able to do that, it's it's very easy. Uh, there's plenty of videos. In fact, I'm going to drop one in the description here. Uh, node editing and breaking the lines because that's often important as well. But I do highly recommend that you spend some time and learn all of these features of Lightburn so you can do most of your designing right here. It's done. And then you can try it and see if it works. So let's get on with making these holes. All right, say this is a piece of leather right here. And you want to make holes around the inside of this. I'm going to guess that you already know how to make corners. Corners are kind of important. If you have shape properties, so window shape properties, you will see it over here. Um, you can make circles. So here, let, let's, uh, let me make a little square here. And see, you see a corner radius. So you can change that corner radius and... You can type in anything you want and get different corner sizes. See, you can make this and it's, it's really, really useful, but sometimes you don't want to do all of the corners, right? And so you just want to do one or two corners. Well, there's this thing called radius. And so you can type on a corner when you hit radius and it will just add that. Now, when I'm going a kind of a long ways to say uh, about the holes for a reason. A lot of times when you make the holes, you're going to need corners. And also, um, sometimes you will click on a shape and, and then you'll click on the nodes and it won't have any. And you're like, hey, what's going on? I can't click on these nodes and you're going to need them to be able to make circles. And so what you need to do is go up to edit, convert to path. So if you go over here, these this is the node section. And so if you're highlighted on something and you, it won't give you nodes, go up and make sure that it's converted to path. And then all of a sudden you will see these nodes because this little green square here is going to be important. So I've already done that to this square that I happen to need. And I know that the node is right up here in the upper. Oh, actually. So the green little node that I'm going to want is right there. So I know I'm going to want my circle. And I'm going to show you how to make that here in a second. Uh, to be close to that. All right. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is now I need a stitch line. So where am I going to get that stitch line? Am I just going to make a square and try and make it perfect to fit in here? I find the easiest way. And again, everything that I'm teaching right now is just my experience. There's probably way better ways to do this. In fact, please share if you find them. But this is just the way that I have found that it's the easiest to do this. 
So you click on your outside edge, and then you're going to hit offset. And then it says outward, inward, or both. Well, we're going to want inward for your stitch line. So you can see already I've got this line inside perfectly. Now you can change this. Point 0.1 seems to work really well for me. It seems like a good distance. But I would certainly try this and see if it works for you. Now remember, there's going to be little circles all along here. So you don't want to get it too close to the outside. Because remember, we need a little room for those circles. So that looks really good to me. So I'm going to leave it like that. So now I've got a stitch line. So the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need the hole itself. So I go over here, I click, and you can just make a circle. So you hold shift. If you hold shift down, then it will make a perfect circle, which is what you want to do. I have found that for what I am working on, 0.45 or 0.46 is about perfect. So 0 0.45, uh, 0.46 inches. You can convert that to millimeters in Google or whatever you need to do. But it might be different for any person. I'm using Ritza Tiger Thread, which happens to be kind of thick. I've ordered some uh, linen thread, which is uh, very expensive, linen cable, but that may be a little bit thinner. So it also depends what kind of look you want. The tiger, Ritz of Tiger Thread is going to last forever. It is a synthetic thread that's already waxed. It makes things so easy, but I find even the thinnest ones look very thick because it's got it's flat instead of round. So if you look on my, my wallets that I sell, you will see that looks pretty thick. Now I do sometimes want a thinner look, so I'm I'm kind of experimenting with that. Many of you out there probably know way more than I do about this, and I'm definitely looking forward to your comments. I really just wanted to show people how they do this because it seemed like there was a lot of people who needed to know. All right, so now that you've got your circle and you know that it's the size that you want it to be, I'm going to click on the thread line, and then I'm going to click on the nodes right? And then you're going to see, okay, here's my nodes. So you're going to look for this one, the little green. In each corner, there's probably going to be a little box. Well, there in one corner, there will be the little green box. So I'm going to take that circle, and maybe there's a better way to do this, and some of you can help me out here. I want that circle to be right in the center of that node box. It is kind of a pain to click back and forth, click and then click on node. Oh, I've got it perfect, which is really nice. So that works. And then you're going to want to click back on the circle. So you want just the circle selected first. Then you're going to hold shift and you're going to click on your stitch line. I'm going to back out a second here so you, everybody can see what's going on. You're going to go up to Arrange, and you're going to go to Copy Along Path. This is just the godsend for making these little stitch lines. And how many copies? So let's just start out with 200, and you can see there is a, a pretty nice stitch line there. That's just for this particular thing. But I like to type in a number just so I have a bunch so that I can kind of see that I did everything correctly and there's some stitch line there. Because it's probably easier to see, say, space between copies. And you're going to want to keep an eye on that spot where you very first put your very first circle because that one is going to have your leftover space in it. So right now, it doesn't look like there's any leftover space it's absolutely perfect looking. But watch if I change this to, so say 2.6, you can see the space between the, these two, the first one and the last one is larger than the space between the other ones. Now, you may have to manually move one over, but you can generally get it pretty close. So I find that the space in between 
about 4.7 millimeters or 0. 0.1850 inches works for me. So this particular thing's in millimeters. So if I say 4.7, you can see that it's very good for a stitch line, I find. And you do still have a little extra space here between my last dot and my last line. So I'm going to click OK there. And I'm going to come out and I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, hey, you know, that looks like a pretty good stitch line. But I, what I would do is just do this on a piece of paper or something, make sure that this fits how you want it to, and that in the corners or wherever you want it, that it's everything's going to match up how, how you would like. And then I would go down to your very last two and click on the last dot and just move it slightly closer so that now you can't really even tell that the spacing is slightly different. Now, you guys might have some other way to do this. And like, again, I have, I don't know. This is just my own experience. But wow, how easy was that? So easy to make your own stitch line in Lightburn. And when I'm done, I just click on the old line and then hit delete. And there we go. We've got our stitch line. Now, all of these can be put as a group or they can be left individual. Say that these top ones that you want to just get rid of them, it's easy to just hit delete. Any of these can be deleted, moved, however you want. You can add another one. Say I wanted to add just one up here. Um, make it look a little bit more even. Now you can already see kind of what the spacing is between each one. So you can kind of figure out for yourself what would make sense for the next one. And that's what I love. It's just once you get this, you, you could do so many little fun manual things. I will never get used to how this zooms in and out. <laughs> Every time I feel like I get it wrong. Anybody else have that trouble? It's like, it seems like no matter what, when I zoom in and out, it ends up going some different direction than I want it to. But I think this will sew together very nicely. Maybe I'll show you guys when I get make this. But you can see, I mean, I've been using this for my wallets and they're turning out really nice. I just did this uh, Chinese prosperity wallet. It's kind of like a red envelope, um, you know, considering it's been uh, Chinese New Year's and I've been getting this request. And I think it turned out absolutely gorgeous. And that's one of the things about leather, diode laser or CO2. If you get your settings down just right, you will have no burning on the edges. It will cut out super clean. I've made, you know, 20 wallets or so with this. Every single one of them has come out perfect. The holes come out perfect. It glues together. It sews. It is remarkable how great. I'm working on a 10 watt diode laser and I'm using like, oh, I think the two millimeter uh, leather because that's just the, the feel and the look that I want. I use really good Italian leather and I use really good uh, thread just because I love working with it. I worked with cheaper leather and honestly, the stuff just looked terrible. It looked like I was an amateur which I am. <laughs> but when I started using the really nice leathers, it just every, the whole process just became so much easier. And I'm so much happier with the way that the, the final product comes out. And so I think there are so many ways to make money or make products with a laser that are amazing. But I truly believe that, see, so you could do keychains in the same way, right? Hat patches all kinds of things. I truly believe that uh, leather is is fantastic a medium for a diode laser and uh, can't say enough about that. So I'll be doing way more videos on that. I did one on making wallets, but I'll probably do one in the future because I'm so much better at it now than I was before. And it really doesn't take a lot of, of tools and money to do this. And breaking up, you know, like I said, the other thing you want to learn is how to break up nodes and, and uh, shapes and things like that, which there's a lot of great videos on. 
Um, there wasn't a lot of easy videos on this, which is why I made this video. But if you want to go down to the description, I did put one down there for editing node shapes, but there are many, many, many more. And just figure out whichever one uh, makes the most sense for you. And just learn a little bit every day. Practice. You can do... I, I really recommend using a cardstock or something uh, to practice with. Make make these things first. To make sure that they work. And... Uh, try new stuff. Like I'm, I'm putting together like, uh, acrylic and leather, or you could do wood and leather and all kinds of different things that nobody's ever done before. And that's the magic of lasers. So, uh, I hope you learned something here. If I missed anything, let me know and I'd be happy to explain it. All right. Thanks.